Welcome to Convict Inc. I'm your host, Robert Rosso. Um, before I go any further, please support this channel by going on to the merchandise check app, the merchandise section, checking it out. You know, uh, guys, listen. So I don't have a I don't have a clock in here, so I can't see how long these phone calls are. So sometimes when I sound like I'm rushing or something, or all over the place in my words, well, I've been like that for a long time anyway. Um, it's because I'm I'm trying to be conscious or trying to figure out how long I've been on the phone, either because I've got a 15 minute phone call, you know. So anyway, the other day I did a, a part one of this, and when I hung up, I was almost going to have it taken down because I felt like it was just blase, and there was like really no meat meat on it. I want to do a backtrack real quick and talk about a few things in regards to marijuana. When I first started doing it as a kid, I really loved smoking pot, and and um, I did it to be cool for sure at times. But uh, I look back now, and I do believe I did it for anxiety. Um, I do. I, it, for sure, it was part of the cool kid stuff, for sure. And uh, the, the being sneaky and the, the whole little, you know, criminal, I guess. Nah, I don't know about criminal, but just being sneaky in the, in the whole thing, for sure, it, it was about that. Um, but I did smoke. I did have a job in the, in the construction. I remember I did smoke a few hits. I think it's totally wiped out. But it did... I, I actually was productive when I worked in that way, like construction. Now, if I was writing or being a normal person, or it, would, it made me chill out a lot. And a lot of times I used it, um, you know, making myself feel better because I, when I, as I got older, because I did snort at least a half gram of coke or whatever. Day. Which brings me to the cocaine thing. I said I did coke basically from the age of 17 to 22 probably missed 90 days from that time and that's no bullshit so um and i i can say that i never coke was like one of the drugs that i i did all the time that i almost didn't like i did coke i remember when i first started snorting coke um after i went through a little free base base at the age of 15. i went through a six month free base slash uh crack it wasn't really crack but crack smoking cocaine thing um, from 15 and a half to 16 for about a year at Indudy Coke. And when I did, when I first started doing it, I remember I used to, I, like, I, I was living with my fiance at the time. We were kids together. She's my high school sweetheart, junior high school sweetheart. We moved out together when I was 17 she, or 18. And um, she was pregnant pretty quick. And she didn't know I was using for eight and seven months or something. It was, it was months. I used to just snort like a huge line, a half gram, and then just lay down and rush and go to bed. Um, that, that's, that was the way I first started doing it. Um, when I got into my twenties and started drinking alcohol first and using cocaine and alcohol, that's when I coke was like fun for me. But I, I look back at even the times I do it, I, I couldn't talk well. It clammed me up. It put me to bed a lot. So I over, I'd over amp. I do big lines and over amp. Um, it was, not, it was the drug that I just didn't enjoy. Now let's go to next, which was uh, on the list which was heroin. I first used heroin in the California Department of Corrections, and that was in uh, 1995. Um, or actually, it was in the beginning of 96, I do believe. And when I did that drug for the first time, and I've talked about how it happened, I'm not gonna do that right now. Um, well, the short version is is uh, a neighbor was was going home. He was the dope man. He wanted to watch I had. I, he, I, he traded me a gram. I was going to flip it and sell it, but I wanted to snort some. Well, I ended up not snorting some, and I ended up trying heroin intravenously for the first time. And it was like walking on clouds. It was the best drug feeling that I've ever had in my life. I can honestly say that. And I and I don't want to say that to make kids want to try it because that's it's also a life destroyer um after i got out of chino i uh i went back and i started doing meth and that's when i started drinking methamphetamine that was in uh 1996 through 1997 i drank it in my coffee and it supercharged me it was a sex drug it was a uh, um i i i really i i smoked pot the whole time i did it and i can say that i it, it enjoyed it at the time um, I also knew that it was, if, I always said that people, the old saying used to be that cocaine was the devil's dandruff. And I believe that. 
cocaine's the devil's dandruff, methamphetamine is the devil himself. I believe that's true. And um, I always knew that. I always knew that there was some kind of evil, something evil about meth, especially back in the days when it was P2P and hydrous, the different, the different chemicals that was in the methamphetamine compared to today. Um, but nevertheless, I can say that that, uh, that was something that I liked, way, especially way more than Coke when I started. When I got to, I'm, I'm, I said the part about drinking back, yeah. When I started really, really getting into heroin, I dabbled it, I tried it in Chino. That was the first day I started my life sentence in Leavenworth USP. And I look back now and I can see that that was just to drown out being scared, uh, the, the reality of having life without parole, the reality of that I was never going to see my kids or have a relationship. I didn't know I was never going to have a relationship or things were going to turn out like that now. But just knowing that that was um, not going to happen. Yeah, I believed I was going to get out, but I didn't know when. But, but the point is, is, is that heroin just made everything all better. And it didn't matter if I was in prison. Any place I did, it was the place to be. I did that um, pretty pretty steadily at Leavenworth. I've said before I used heroin for 10 years. I did. Uh, Lewisburg, there was um, there was some clean time. There was a 30-month period after I found out I had cancer. Um, I did drink in prison, uh, moonshine, wine. Um, and then, of course, in 2007, after I got cancer, I was at the Butner um, Federal Medical Center, and that's when I really started getting into uh, prescription pills. 2007, Butner, they'd given away uh, Percocet, Oxys. I mean, there was people literally taking Oxys out onto the visitation room, giving them to their wives or friends, and their friends were taking them out of the prison to sell. That's how much dope they were handing out at the FMC Butner at that time. Um, but I got strung out, and I and I had two near overdoses on fentanyl, and uh, and it was when I left Butner FMC and went to uh, Butner FCI one, um, October the seventh, October the thirteenth, two thousand seven is when I decided that I needed to quit. That was my first clean date. I winged myself off Percocet prescription Percocets that I was on, and I didn't use any drugs again until. Um, what was it may of 2011 um that was that was my backstory as far as my drug history um I, uh, prescription drugs scare the fuck out of me even recently when i was on the street and using um when i had surgery done even my last bladder surgery on january the 18th i got uh norco or a, a lightweight percocet whatever 7.5 and uh, when I got my prescription, I used it one time. I used it one day, one day. So I took three pills at one time is what I did, okay? So I did, that's what I actually did. And I threw the bottle away um, in part because um, uh, I thought my wife was gonna come over and check. But another, another reason was because it always, I have this thing in my head, if I, if I do prescription drugs more than three days straight, I, I don't know if I can stop it. That really wakes the beast in me. Um, and that sounds kind of crazy given that uh, I probably did more, well, alcohol more than anything in the next second when I was out this last time. But anyway, so that, that pretty much clear, clears up my drug history. I, I've wanted to talk about that for a while. Um, if, if I had people always, the questions always comes up, drug of choice, drug of choice. If I had to say a drug of choice, it'd be tar, black tar first, followed by Percocet, not Oxy, just plain Percocet pens. And those are the drugs that scare me the most. Um, when I got out of prison and I started drinking, I, I didn't know what, like, what I do now as far as the anxiety issues I have. Uh, I've recently been told about PTSD. I've always thought that was bullshit. Some psychologists and psychiatrists have really explained that to me better, even since I've been here. Um, probably, and in all open and honesty, probably uh, I'm on the bipolar two spectrum. And that can lay dormant and get exasperated. The signs can come out of that, especially with the usage of methamphetamine. Um, oh, I got to back up. In between 2012 and, two, and the time I came home, I was on and off on Suboxone when I was in prison um, at Butner FCI. I would go on stretches or runs or whatever you say. And uh, Suboxone, for those of you who don't know, is, is to help wean you off of opiates. 
it's, a, it's an actual synthetic opiate, and then there's a blocker in it. It's supposed to get people off of heroin or, or opiate addictions. But if you misuse it, you get high off of it. Um, when coming down, you're very depressed for long periods of time, even when you use it for a period, uh, just a couple days. I now can see that. I can look back at the different arguments I had in prison that were all based off of the fact that I was coming off of Suboxone or whatever. And um, that's, the, that's the truth. Um, it's, it's taken me, you know, just to really to really look at it. It's 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 taken me up until until uh, this this point in my life to really realize that. Um, but what I'm hoping, I guess, is I don't try to I'm not trying to glamorize any drugs. I'm trying to just give a clear history of my drug uh, of abuse, use, whatever. Um, I will say that that 90 days coming up here would be the fourth uh well you know i just said this in a different video so i used on the second i used on january january the second and i used on january the third but i stayed up until the fourth so it was my clean date the fourth is my clean date the fifth whatever you want to say but coming up this is the first time in 90 days that i've been clean since pre-covid and um covid uh turned me back into an alcoholic uh, I've always had that bug in me, but COVID for sure did. I started drinking before I got out of prison, and I think that led to really the reason I, one of the primary reasons why I'm here today, I believe, I, I you know, whatever, it, it is what it is, that's in the past, um, but I can, I can see the pattern of how it happened, um, how I took that first pain pill when my knee blew, when I, well, actually I hurt my back at the time when I was uh, out, um, family member gave it to me it was totally innocent and then uh and then i you know caught, used a couple more and then and then i found myself one night smoking methamphetamine and the rest is history uh blown relationships across the board divorce whatever anyway so that's that's my uh that's my that's my history people and um like i said before i was going to call this junkie loser and i don't care if people refer to me that i really don't um, what I care about more than anything is uh, being able to take this, take all the knowledge that I've learned in rehab the last couple of times and maybe flip this around. Um, I, I, if, if you can tell that I sound a little bit down. You have one minute remaining. I will say, like I said in the video I just did a little while ago in regards to saturated prisons, whatever the title I put out, uh, a kid came in here that I was in rehab with and uh, you know, he's like, Rob, Rob, and, and it was, uh, I, I didn't remember his name at first, but um, he's from Tulsa here, real close by, and he told me that after everybody found out I relapsed, it just changed the whole group. The group was, like, defeated, and that fucked me up. It really did. Um, because I, when I left, you know, I, I felt like I was walking on the, uh, I, I was going to be able to do it. Anyway, take care. Thanks for your support. Um, uh, OG Mike, thank you for everything, brother. Bye.